Good. So, um, so today we are going to wrap up, wrap up uh, on the last lecture and uh, uh, discuss how to compute gradings for optimization and uh, uh, how do you solve statistical learning problems, machine learning problems. So last lecture we discussed uh, optimization and uh, uh, we figured out uh, one of the key ingredients to solve an optimization problem is the gradient the derivative of both the objective function and constraints with respect to the design parameters right and we also discussed how to compute the gradients using finite difference and uh, as we can see the cost of computing gradients with finite difference requires computing requires actually performing the evaluation or a simulation if the evaluation involves a simulation for n plus one times where n is the number of design parameters so today we are going to look at uh, alternatives for computing the gradients using more computationally efficient methods we're going to be looking at the two methods the one is uh, forward propagation and one is back propagation all right and uh, we're going to see how these methods are going to compute gradients for us with a more cost effective uh, manner. So, uh, the forward propagation actually is very similar in spirit to finite difference. But rather than performing separate simulations with uh, different parameters, it, it performs one simulation and when you are performing the simulation you are simultaneously tracking the derivative of the simulation so I, I want to illustrate this method with a simple example the example is really a very simple uh, function f being a function of two design variables so let's say f is either the constraint or objective function it is written as a x1 times x2 the product of the, the two uh, design variables plus a sine function of x1 so this is basically our simulation i mean in reality when you are solving a differential equation for example we are performing a vast amount of operations but all these operations are pretty simple, right? Think of uh, uh, the schemes we are using in finite difference, finite volume, finite element. The schemes we are using ultimately translate into a code, a computational code written in MATLAB or some other language. And what happens in this code are these simple operations, multiplication, addition, sometimes sinusoidal functions, exponential functions, square roots and things like that every one of them are pretty simple so you can organize this set of sim um, operations into what's called a computational graph so a graph like this is called a computational graph so this graph is a cyclic so uh, it's a uh, which means uh, there is no loops in this graph, right? So you cannot, uh, uh, I mean, the, the computation goes in a fixed order. I mean, you don't go back in time during the computation. So, uh, which means uh, you always have a direction. So, so for example, I'm going to illustrate uh, this very simple operation with this graph. First of all, you have this uh, multiplication operator that multiplies x1 with x2 and you produce the product of x1 and x2 so x1 times x2 is the output of this product okay uh, on the other hand you also compute the sign of x1 so this is the sign of x1 being this edge so every edge is really a quantity intermediate quantity so at, at the final stage you add the output of the product and the output of the sign and that gives you the final objective function right so that's what the computational graph is and the forward propagation method for computing the derivative basically look at the computation graph and uh, takes derivative 
of every operation in this computational graph. All right. For example, uh, this graph here illustrates the procedure for differentiating the output with respect to the second uh, uh, design variable x2. So to start this procedure, uh, I'm going to look at the derivative of the inputs with respect to x2, the design parameter we want to differentiate with. So that's the seed, the derivative of the inputs with respect to the quantity you want to differentiate, right? Uh, so here, my derivative of x1 with, re with respect to x2 is equal to zero. That's why the zero is here, because x1 is independent of x2. The derivative of x2 with respect to x2, of course, is equal to one, because x2 is x2, right? So that is the seed of the forward propagation. 